Welcome to the show, everybody. What's going on? Dark Sizzle, <laughs> Putin, coming at you from the deep sea right here in our home waters, Boynton Inlet, and we are doing some trolling. About Again. Our, yeah, it's about this our fifth time trying to catch a Wahoo. I think more. I think more. And uh, I think it's the earliest. We got it at 6.30, got lines in. It's about 6.40. We got a minor going on right now, too, which I'm excited about. 622 to 722. Yes, yeah, so we're right. very excited. It's, uh, you know, like to go, like to try for Wahoo before the full moon. We didn't do well yesterday, and other times we went for other moons, and hopefully this is our day. Yeah, and you can see it's pretty dark still. We got first light right behind us, but the sun's coming up, and the day is going to be beautiful. I'm excited. Take you, you guys along. Yeah, if you're seeing this, we caught something. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the banana? Oh, I left the banana in the truck. Oh, you took, I saw a peel in the truck. Did I eat it? Yeah, I must have ate it. Yesterday I brought it on the boat. Charm. Yeah. All right. Hopefully we'll see you again. Leave it, just leave big it. Big jump, big jump. Sailfish. Sailfish? Sailfish on the All right, we got boats over there. All right. So let's, I'm going to slow down a tad. That boat, fish is running towards that boat. Shoot. You want to bring it up, Tad? He might be past that boat's bow. All right, guys. I thought you saw a big splash. Might be a sailfish, which we really do just, not want. Just, I'm reeling. I never really saw the fish, but it was a big splash on the surface. All right. It was a big splash, like a shake on the surface. And okay. it just reminded me of a sailfish, but you know, I don't know. We've been trolling for hours out here with not a bite yet today. All right, got Darcy on there. All right, so just keeping that boat in gear. We're going with the current now. So that's keeping pressure on this line with this fish. And with the two of us, we're trying to get the cameras ready and everything so we can film this awesome break, this awesome day for you. It's an awesome adventure, I guess you could say. But we're keeping the boat in gear. I'm letting Brian bring this up. I'm not reeling because I don't want to get this fish too close without having this rig up. So we want to be ready to gaff or whatever we need to do to catch this fish. All right, well, could just be a bonita. Baby. <laughs> Stop. Not beneath a hole, that's for sure. It's more like a tuna hole. It's a beautiful day. It's supposed to hit 87 degrees today, which is wild. It's be a record temperature today. Like an it's absolute crazy. record for this time of the year. Should be getting close, honestly. There's a big shake on the surface. I mean, I know the fish we want does that too, but you never know. We maybe, will see. maybe turn that wheel. It's nice and steady reeling, slow pump. Fish was away, you know, fish at the way, way back line. All right, we're getting real close here, Brian. Yeah, I just turned around and was able to see this long line just bend over and I was like, fish on. Oh, color? Looks silver. Oh, that's what we want, babe. Get over here. I will. Get over here. Get time. Get over here. This fish is coming over here. I see. Where do you want them? Where do you Go want that them? Way. Where do you want them? Go that way, straight. real tight. Come straight, come straight. Oh my gosh! Yes! 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 <laughs> It's a nice it. one. Oh, All right. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's a beauty, baby. On the long line. All day at 30. We got our Wahoo. <laughs> Freaking finally, man. Finally. Gorgeous fish. That's upper 20s. Look at the belly on that fish, baby. Oh, man. This, you guys have no idea how hard we work for this fish. Oh, my no Lord. No idea. Oh, look at that. Hook just fell right out. Yeah. On the my mahi strip I made. What a beauty, baby. That's awesome. You guys just have no idea. We've just put in hours and hours of work on this beautiful fish. Probably like five fish. We got our wahoo! <laughs> yes! That's what I'm talking about. Monster wahoo for days, baby. Gorgeous nice. fish. That's a nice fish for this area. Yeah, Really can't complain. Area. Look at the back on them. Just an absolute beaut. Not the big one for around here. This is a nice fish. What do you think? You're not saying nothing. Brian's I can't like believe it. As a mouse. I can't believe it. Dude, I wanted to go today and it just paid off. <sighs> Look at that fish. <sighs> I'm so happy. We're going to be feeding the entire neighborhood with the zebra fish. Yeah, boy. Woo. Epic. Let's get another. All right, guys, I'm coming over here. The fish is mostly dead, but just in case, I want to try and bleed him out real quick. He is still kicking a little bit. Want to get pictures with that fish before uh, bleeding him out and being a total mess. But you guys just see what I'm doing. I'm basically just breaking those gill plates. Nice. And you can also make a cut right here behind the peck fin, and he'll bleed out like so. I learned that from a commercial fisherman. 
But that's about it, guys. I'm gonna let the fish sit here for a minute and get them right on ice. And let's get right back to fishing using this Smith's four inch bait breaker. All right, we're back to fishing. Gonna clean up all this marine bat. It's kind of a mess up here, but we play with fish when we catch them because it's our job to. So we took a lot of nice pictures, got some video, got our thumbnail for the video you guys are watching. So we're just so thrilled. Got line, but lines right back out because the next best time to catch your next wahoo is right after catching your first wahoo. Fish on, fish on. All right, all right, all right, all right guys. All right, right here, 240, fish on. Tell me what to do, baby. Go to the, yeah, you're good. All right, we got a fish on the short planer. All right. More banana, or slow down, one or the other. Okay. Get this rod above your head. All right, guys, so short planer just went off, literally maybe less than 10 minutes into putting lines back out. Just got the marine mat cleaned up with all that blood, and this line went off as soon as I took the wheel from Brian. So now that's twice I've been driving. We got a fish on. You tell me, back off the drag. Planer is coming up, guys. A little, a little my way, a little more. Okay, I got a boat there. That's why. Where? Right. No, you don't. Right? All right, all right, let's go straight. I'm gonna banana then. Boat speed is good? Yeah. Okay. Speed is good right now. Brian's reeling up this fish. He's got the detachable bridle system. You can see he's taking off his planer right now. And now we're gonna reel up the 100 foot leader to the hook where the fish is. And I'm making Thanks. a tight banana here. So we keep the fish on this side of the boat. And I'm gonna get the gaff. My arm's getting tired. You got it, you got it. Good speed, Brian. Straight, straight. Good speed? Yeah. The tuna? Yeah. Woo! What? Oh! <laughs> How sick is that? <laughs> nice! The bite is freaking turning on out here, y'all. That's a nice fish for this area. Yeah, it's a great tuna. All day, that's a great tuna. Another juicy, juicy fish for us. We are just getting blessed by the fishing gods today. I am just like so thrilled. Look how gorgeous that is. Look at that strip once again, a strip that I made on our blue and white um, yeah. our blue and white sea witch today and that's, with a new hook from RJ Boyle. That's RJ Boyle's new planer hook. Woo! Look at that! That's a stud. That's a nice football. Look at the shoulders. Probably nice like fish. a 10, 12 pound tuna. Yeah, nice fish. Dude, I'll take it all day. Oh my God, we gotta get lines right back out. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited. It's two yeah. for two. All right, guys, we're gonna bleed out this tuna as well. I learned this from a commercial fisherman. I fished without us a, a Cape Canaveral and he literally just cuts them right there behind the fin and they'll bleed out too. We also just go right in here and you can rake their gill plates and break them with this break breaker knife, which is an awesome boat knife from Smith Consumer Products. And I'll link that down below for you guys. But you can see this fish will bleed out quickly and we'll get them on ice. But man, I'm just so thrilled. I can't wait to catch another fish right now. Back at the house, guys. We made it. Uh, guys, I was flabbergasted on the boat. He's usually so excited when we catch a wahoo. He didn't say a word. I couldn't believe it. Get the fish out. Let's get, we gotta get yeah, going. Yeah, you want to see how I jammed them in here? Like it's the biggest fish in a long time. I haven't. I like he didn't even fit correctly. He's all jammed up. <laughs> I've already taken out a bunch of the ice so I can get him out. But you can see nice. he's like a snake in there. Nice fish. So let's get that nice fish out. Yeah, guys. You know, I mean. Catch a fish out of on the southeast Florida is not you know what it used to be. And we we figured out we went four trips before we caught our target species here. And you know, and that can happen to anybody. You know, so don't, you know, so you gotta just keep at it and that's what we did. And we had a goal and we, and we did it. Um, I, and I don't I don't know how much I talked about on the boat and what we were running, but it's really a normal spread. I showed you the lure, here's the copy of the lure we caught this on. This is on the middle line and the way, way back. Um, you just put it back as far as you can send it, depending on you know, boat traffic. And again, that was on the a neighbor walking by. That again, that was on the, uh, on that purple, purple and black island where the strip Darcy made. And again, we're just running a normal planer setup, like what we call the black tuna on, blue and white on one side and the uh, pink on the other side. Yes. You guys, you guys always want to ask. I'm going to give him a good spray. Keep talking. So she said. Oh, oh my God. He said, I don't even know. I should shut up. Oh my but God. But anyway. It's cold. And people always, and you guys always ask, how fast are you going? How fast are you going? It's, you know, it doesn't matter, okay? Yeah. Well, it does yeah, I, matter. I, I mean, it doesn't matter that much. Regular trolling with planes, you know, you're going five to 10 knots, I don't know, into the current, out of the current, we zigzag between one and 300, the speed changes. You go slower when it's rough, you go faster when it's calm, depends on the lures you're pulling. The most important factor is you're pulling the lures to make, so that they run right, okay? If you're pulling all live bait, you're going like one knot so they don't die. If you're pulling dead bait, 
you know, you're going a little faster. If you're pulling all lures, you're going even faster, okay? So it depends on what you're doing and make your baits run right. And then, you know, and you vary your speed and you do a lot of turns. A wise captain told us that fish bite on changes, okay? That's not only color changes, temperature changes, that's also your boat changing speed, turns, okay? All this kind of stuff, right? So you figure it out out there. Every day's different, okay? Yes. You know, we're, I think we're doing seven into the current and 10 with the current. Yeah. You know, but I don't know what your current is, all right? Yeah, so we're going about nine to 10 with the current. All right, let's get this and, fish going. Uh, yeah, let's get all, get ahead and get this fish going. You can see he's bigger than the table. And that was our biggest fish ever on like a surface line trolling. You usually catch the bigger wahoo on the planer rod. So it was just really epic to catch this nice fish. What are you gonna do with all this fish? On the surface. We're gonna feed the entire neighborhood with this beautiful <laughs> fish. It's actually a really nice fish. I mean, he's like chunky, he's wide. He's 30 pounds, believe nice. it or not. I mean, it's just a chunky, nice stout fish. So let's just dive right into this. I'm gonna take my time with it. It's been a while since I've had a delicious wahoo and we're gonna have some delicious fish. Got these knives all sharpened up, ready to go. And let's just do this. We're gonna cut right behind his pack fin, just like a lot of other fish. And wait till you guys see this meat. And you guys can see I'm using my eight inch today, just because it's a way larger fish than I have caught in quite a while. Way up into his head, as far as we can possibly go. I stopped recording by accident. I got, we gotta repeat a fail, little bit. Fail, fail. Video fail, we apologize guys about that. Um, I was going down that backbone so we totally missed that cut all the way down. Basically what I did was just cut all the way, bended the knife and cut all the way down to his spine and then stopped. So now, by the way, these knives are available. I'm gonna link it down below for you guys, smithproducts.com. Promo code are sizzle15 plus free shipping. It's an awesome deal, you're gonna save 15%. So now what I did after I made that cut all the way down to the spine, I'm gonna break them up into sections because it's a large fish. So I've already broken up this section right here. I made that cut all the way down. And basically I'm making sure that the loins are the same thickness. So now we're just gonna take these slabs off one at a time. So nice controllable slabs that I can work with. And this meat is so amazing. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, amazing. I'm so excited to just fill up on Wahoo. So there's our first big Wahoo loin. And we're gonna feed the entire neighborhood. I think we already said that, but. <laughs> Now I'm gonna make another cut, same exact deal. Probably like right here. And then the same exact deal, you see I've already cut down to the, to the spine, and then I'm really bending that blade. You can see how I'm bending it in there. And then take off this next loin. And this is just pretty easy to fillet. There's one, oh, look at that neat. It's like, it's like translucent. Like you see that glitter in there? Just a gorgeous sushi gray fish. All right, and then same exact deal here. I'm just gonna keep this whole tail section intact. And I had cut through just to the other side. That's how sharp my knife is, but I was able to fix that no problem. They have very small scales because they're pelagic fish and they live in the upper water column. They don't live by the bottom or anything. So the scales on this fish are just really almost non-existent. But what we're gonna do now, actually that's the gaff shot too, by the way. That's where the gap went in, so no big deal there. That's not a lot of waste. But I'm gonna to switch to my smaller knife so I can make more controlled cuts. And all we're gonna do here, you can see right in the middle, I bled this fish. You can see that's where the, the bones in the uh, inner red line runs. And so all we're gonna do is follow that to skin it. So instead of going across like I normally would, I'm just gonna go down. When you get right before the skin, make your turn and then cut through. Same exact thing, go down, make your turn, and cut. Move this back a little bit. And so that way, we already have our loins already cut, ready to eat. There's gonna be no bones, there's gonna be no bloodline, it's gonna be just delicious. And then this was a little piece of the head up there, so we're just gonna go in here, right through. And we got one loin. a Little bit of skin there, but that's not a big deal. You can fix that very easily. I'll do that in a second. And then we're just gonna flip that over, do the same exact thing on this bottom loin. We'll first get this little bit of belly meat off. There we go. And then we're just gonna cut down. trying to get as much meat as possible, taking my time with it. There's no rush. 
and it's just super windy today. We got out there right before the full front came through and just so blessed that these just were chewing. And we got that and the bonus tuna. All right, so there's another loin and that's easily trimmed up. But you can see how we got these two loins and we left all that stuff right in the middle. We left that bloodline and some of those pin bones and whatnot. So that is all set. I'm gonna use all this carcasses and extra stuff in my stone crab traps. And here's a beautiful piece of meat. And I'm just gonna do the same exact thing, repeat the process and make those same exact cuts and get this all prepared for the house. But I am so excited to eat Wahoo. Top three favorite fish to eat of all time for me, for sure. And we're just living the dream out here, y'all. So I'm gonna finish up this fish and then meet you guys in the house for the cooking with wooden portion of this video. Woo, what's up guys? Welcome to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. And uh, before we dive in here, uh, I got a little B-roll for you. Let me tell you how we cooked it now. Oh, I'm sitting on my- Wahoo special edition. Yeah, Wahoo, I'm cook sitting on I'm sitting on my cord. Got my mic cord all messed up, I'm cooking. Anyway, here we go. All right, ready. There's trials and tribulations. You're seeing the real stuff behind the scenes. So, well, you know, we always just eat sushi or eat Wahoo for sushi. And honestly, that's the best way to have it. Okay, like last night, we cut some slices off. Darcy's diving in here already. Yeah. Um, and just made sushi on some simple rice. But of course, there's a lot of people that don't like sushi. So. Right. Uh, can I please tell them what about the cooking part? This is my section. Do I dive into the fillet section, folks? You're right. No. All right. So, sushi. They, they want to hear all about wahoo and what it's compared to. Wahoo is, is one of the most delicious fish you're ever going to get. That's why I was so excited to catch it all the time. Also a great sport fish. Okay. So, it's a, but it's a firmer fish, like tuna or cobia. Okay, so we want to have, we love to have it as sushi. It's like the best sushi you're going to have. So just a sashimi, a lot of times we just put it on some sticky rice we make with the rice maker, but you can also make the rolls and everything. Next thing you do is sear it in a pan, which we've done a hundred times as well. Today we decided we're going to cook it because we never cook it for you guys. So uh, I just put it on the grill. I lathered it up with some olive oil and plenty of salt and pepper, put it on the grill and guys, listen. You can't overcook it, because again, like I said, it's a firm fish. I, you have to be like petrified that you're gonna overcook it, okay? Because it's gonna cook after you take it off the grill too. So undercook it, okay? And and so I just flipped over real quick and you can see I got a little bit of B-roll. I got some broccoli, because pudding's on a diet, of course, instead of rice. And I made up a quick sauce of just, um, it was butter, a little bit of olive oil so don't burn the butter, capers, and a squeeze of lemon, mix it up. And, and it turned out pretty good. Plated it, and uh, here we are. How is it? It's really good. Yeah. I like the capers. Brian said he doesn't like capers. I'm not a huge fan of capers. But the capers but add like a little bit of pop of like, I don't know, like a little bit of sweetness to it, kind of. I had my secret ingredient like, too. It was sugar. Sugar. He's a sugar freak. He's a sugar freak over here. So. Um, but it's really good. And I mean, even though Brian didn't overcook it, it's just, it turned out really tough. <laughs> like. Tougher. Not tough, it's firm. It's just firm, yeah, 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 yeah. I would like to say this is cobia, like if I didn't know this was wahoo, because it's so similar when it's right. cooked. I mean, nothing wrong with it, not complaining. We just prefer it raw every day of the week. <laughs> yeah, it's and this amazing. is like, what is this, Sunday or Saturday? It's Monday. Mm -hmm. We caught it on Friday. So we had sushi like a bunch, mm -hmm. and then, you know, so that's what you do. You have sushi first day, maybe you can uh, have a sushi the next day. Third yep. day, you know, second day, maybe you, you can just sear it. And mm -hmm. then the third day you cook it, okay? Yummy. Because otherwise you have, and we gave a bunch away to Frank and the neighbors, but we had 14, how many pounds? Seven, 14 pounds of Wahoo. Yeah, it was 14, 15 pounds of Wahoo, correct. Mm -hmm. um, so we fed the entire neighborhood. Frank just came and got the last of the fish, so it yeah. is all gone, good to go. Share with everybody. But It is really good. It's amazing. I really can't wait to catch another one. So much fun. Especially when they take those smoking drags. But, <laughs> Delicious, amazing. Thank you guys so much for joining us on today's adventure. We had a blast. And until our next one, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Yours is not open. I still got open mine. All right. Loser. I my food. Loser. <laughs> Peer pressure.